And with that, we'll get started. Um, we'll start with you guys introducing yourself, your position, and, and the company that you work for. So we can start with you. Right yeah. My name is Lee Thompson, and I work for Nova Scotia Power, and I'm the manager of the capital program. Great. Um, my name is Jennifer Major, and I work at Bell Alliance, and I'm actually a compensation consultant in the HR department there. My name is Jeff Lanthier. I uh, work at the Business Development Bank as a commercial account manager. My name is David Potter. I work for the Internal Audit Centre as an audit manager for the province of Nova Scotia. Excellent. And what led you folks to the position you're in today, be it education, job experience, professional connections, a co-op that you may have had? And Jennifer, if we can start with you. Um, I actually took a non-traditional path to the role I guess I'm in today. Um, I did my chartered accountancy designation um, through ASCA and I got it actually in industry through Bell Alliance so I didn't go through a firm. Um, so through Bell Alliance what we did is three different rotation paths throughout three years to get your CA designation. Um, so I've been in corporate controls doing a little bit of audit type work. Um, external reporting where you would actually make the financial statements and do accounting policy. Um, as well as in the corporate development and strategy group, which is a lot of business acquisitions um, and the strategy for where the business is going. So I finished my CA and was kind of ready to enter into my full-time role with the company. Um, I currently hadn't quite decided what I wanted to do forever yet, so there was an opportunity in HR um, as a compensation consultant, um, which does, doesn't require you see a designation, but there's a CA in that role right now, and she was going on maternity leave. So through connections, I was able to take her role for the current year um, to give myself a little more time to kind of figure out what I wanted to do. Because as you all know, going through university, you never really know. I still don't really know where, but um, so that's kind of how I'm in the position I'm in today. Great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm Somewhat similar background. I did uh, I did my chartered accountancy designation uh, through ASCA as well. Um, I, I did it through a firm, so I worked uh, for a period of time with with Ernst and Young um, until I got uh, got discouraged with the hours and, and I didn't particularly enjoy enjoy auditing work. Not that it's uh, not that it's a, a bad profession. It's certainly a great profession. You learn a lot, and I, I definitely learned a lot, and it opened doors. But it, it wasn't wasn't a great fit for me. And I guess I'm, I'm similar to, to Jen in the sense that um, uh, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to be when I grow up. So uh, I, after, after working uh, at Ernst & Young for, for a few years, I worked uh, at the Auditor General's office for the province. Uh, thought I'd try audit in a different, sort of a different space and, and do it in, uh, in the public sector as opposed to working for a public practice. Um, I did enjoy uh, I did enjoy performance audit there. It was a, uh, it was a nice change where you're doing audits that aren't Necessarily centered around financial data, but more around programs and stuff that the that the province has uh, in place. So I did enjoy that, but I, I still knew it wasn't something that I wanted to do long term. I enjoyed being out, being in front of people, um, almost more in a sales role. Um, so when I saw a position posted for business development bank, I used my uh, I used my existing network to sort of get me rather than just hand a resume in. I, I used my network to sort of give me a warm introduction to uh, to the hiring manager. And uh, it's a good fit for me because it's it's kind of a combination of uh, of sales as well as doing financial analysis and structuring some of the some of the commercial loans. So it's a it's a good fit that way for me. Great, thank you, and David. I uh, took a similar path. It sounds I took my uh, chartered accountant designation through ASCA uh, after graduating from Saint of X and. I worked with a, a small firm in New Glasgow to, to get my hours. It was the kind of typical public practice uh, background, I suppose. Uh, you had exposure to auditing, tax, uh, a lot of owner-manager businesses. Uh, once I got my, I guess, designation and fulfilled all the time requirements, I moved to Ontario for three years. And to get back to the role I'm in now, uh, it was basically just blind applications from Ontario. So I kind of really had to rely on, on my resume, my direct job experience, and, uh, and I guess my, my CA designation. Uh, the current role as internal auditor, you know, it, it's something that uh, I do enjoy. It's, I guess, as, as Jeff mentioned, 
maybe not uh, as financial as, as some of the other roles that I had in, in the past, but, uh, you know, it, it provides good variety. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy where I am, but, you know, kind of always, always looking to see uh, what other opportunities are out there. Excellent. Great. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. So I first graduated from Mount St. Vincent with a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science. And uh, the, mar the job market at the time um, wasn't great for in Halifax for somebody with a political science background. So I accepted a, a customer service job at Bell Alliant at the time and uh, was later, later applied for a job in corporate finance, uh, an entry level job. I had no previous uh, experience in accounting or finance. Um, but it was through that, that role that I started to get interested in accounting and finance and uh, started my uh, CMA and MBA or the AMAP program. I think it's called the Advanced Managerial Accounting Program. As I got more interested uh, through that program, I went back, to, came back to the Mount to finish um, a Bachelor of Business Administration in Economics. Um, sort of a few years in corporate finance at Bell Alliant, I accepted a position with uh, Amera. Uh, Amira Energy Services to be exact, and um, finished my CMA and MBA. Since then, I've been with, uh, I've moved from different affiliates within Amira, currently in Nova Scotia Power, and I've held, held roles in the Fuels Group, Regulatory Affairs, and now Technical and Construction Services, each uh, role having different experiences, some with more and less financial analysis, but also incorporating areas of operations and strategy. Excellent. Great. Thank you. And so mentioned a couple time were connections that you that you had had. Are there organizations or people that you guys would s suggest students get involved with or maybe seek employment to establish these connections or is that just pretty much, you know, you just take the plunge and, and then those connections are established if you will start with Jeff. Um, I don't know necessarily of any specific groups. It's 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 more just taking the initiative. I know when I uh, when I started, um, I did co-op. I did a co-op program through Dalhousie University, and uh, I started. I did my first co-op term with KPMG here in Halifax, and one with Ernst and Young, and then one here, and then one with Ernst and Young in Ottawa. And uh, I just took the initiative ahead of time. I knew I knew that I was going to be applying for these jobs. I started trying to to meet people through other connections I might have in the city. Um, a lot of people that are that are in the profession understand what what it takes to sort of go through and are often willing to take the time to sit down with with people and sort of whether it's introduce them to people or, or help coach them through it. Um, other things I did uh, before I started work there, I, I I joined their hockey team and started playing started playing hockey with them. It was a way to meet people outside of sort of the business space to to make a connection on more of a personal level. So that was that was sort of how I how I approached it. And then as you as you get to know people, it's a matter of, of just leveraging that network to to get introductions to to other people. And you just you can't be afraid to ask. You know, if you know somebody and and you think they they think you know relatively highly of you, they're usually have no problem introducing you to somebody if, if, if they know there's an interest there from, from you to meet them, so. Great. Anything? Yeah, I, I think there's no, there's no, you know, secret area where we all go meet to network. <laughs> it, it's more kind of taking the initiative to, to go out and, and meet as many people as you can. And I guess I, I applied from Ontario to Halifax, so I didn't have any connections. And, you know, it really relied on uh, the direct experience that I had, and uh, I think the designation helped a lot. Uh, so, you know, one, once I was back in on, or once I was back to, to Halifax from Ontario, it was, you know, kind of then where you can got, go out and uh, network with uh, with clients, with uh, with peers, with other people in the profession. Um, but but yeah, it's just trying to to get out, get as much experience as you can, because you never know, you know, who knows whom, and and. Uh, what what connections you can make without really thinking about it. So it's more maybe just being conscious and, and taking the initiative uh, in that sense. Great, thank one, you. One thing, I, one thing I forgot, there is a financial services group that's been started in the last year, two years in Halifax. It meets on a semi-regular basis uh, downtown and you can find it on LinkedIn. I think it's called the Halifax Financial Services Group or Halifax Financial Services Social. So 
it'd be a good way while you're still in school to, to maybe make an appearance at one or two of, of those events to, you know, shake some hands and meet some people and introduce yourselves. A good place to meet some people anyways in the, in the business. Great. And Lee and I, Jennifer? Yeah, I would say meeting people goes a long way. I didn't have any connections at Bell Lion before I was hired there. Um, but I think a lot of like panel discussions like this, where you can come and meet people who are in the industry, um, shake a hand, put a face to a name, it's really important. So I know there's a mm -hmm. lot of also, um, if you're looking at doing your accounting designation in particular, a lot of firms will put on um, meet and greet type things in the month of September where you can go and meet the people that work there and kind of make some connections that way before you apply so that they can, again, kind of put the face to a name because that is very important. Once I got into Bell Alliant, like I said, I had three different roles within three years. So I was lucky to make an extraordinary amount of connections very quickly, um, which to me is invaluable. Like that has helped me and will help me throughout my entire career. So just really putting yourself out there as much as you can. Like Jeff mentioned, the social that they have as well is a great way to meet people who are in the industry to kind of make those connections. To get in. Okay, and do you have anything to add, Lee? The only thing I'd say is um, this, the way the CMA program is designed, you work very closely with um, other individuals for two and a half years, so you learn about all sorts of different companies, and uh, you inherently develop relationships over that period, and then I just reiterate what everybody else said, both showing interest in the company that you work for, showing interest in different areas of the company can certainly go a long way in developing relationships. Great, thank you. And for the students interested in a career in accounting and finance, does, do the organizations that you folks work for offer summer part-time or co-op positions? And maybe if they do, could you just speak to those a little bit? Or maybe how they could get a foot in the door? <laughs> sure. I can start. Okay. Um, I know we do have summer student opportunities as well. We do hire co-ops. Um, I don't believe currently at this time that any of our co-ops will, because a lot of organizations, if you do a co-op at Ernst & Young or KPMG, it'll count towards your three years of work experience you need to be a chartered accountant. Um, so at Bell Alliance, there aren't any co-ops specifically in the areas where we have our students going through, so we aren't able to give credit like a firm would be. Um, however, all of our opportunities are a great way to kind of get your foot in the door and make that connection early, because we do, from experience, um, if there's a co-op that is in that does really well in an area, we will kind of pull them into the CA program if that's what they're interested in without having to go through the entire rigorous process of interviewing multiple times with multiple different people to kind of get that opportunity. Um, all of our careers are posted on www.bellalliant.ca. So that's where everything goes up, that you can kind of check it out there. I know, I think our co-op um, opportunities have closed for this summer, um, but I think they just yesterday put up some summer student opportunities. Um, and then in September is when we hire for the CA program. Excellent, thank you. And Jeff, do you? Yeah, similar, similar to uh, what Jen said, we, we hire co-op students as well as summer students. And like she said, I mean, I, I can speak from experience. I, I did co-op. I, I signed a, a job offer before I, uh, you know, before I had a year. I still had a year left in school, and it was all because of the connections I made through co-op. And and oftentimes, I mean, the firms are hiring. They're hiring co-op students as sort of a, a trial. And if if things work out, then there's often a job for you at the end of it. So certainly. Um, whether it's a co-op job or whether it's a summer job, getting getting your foot in the door earlier makes it easier. L like she said, I didn't have to go through the rigorous recruiting process afterwards. I went through the hiring process for, for my co-op job, but but didn't have to go through uh, the recruiting process. We, we definitely hire both. Um, we have uh, somebody that was a summer student with us last year that's decided to stay on and he works part-time with us. So that's an option too. He's still in school, so he's, he's taking a full course load and decided that he wanted to take on a little bit of extra work and he's working uh, one or two days a week as well at uh, at the office on the days where where he doesn't have classes so they 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 try and do as, as good a job as possible to get the students doing valuable things not just you know you're not just there photocopying and things like that it's really trying trying to get you to see what the job's all about and uh, try and learn from that so excellent great thank you David uh, the organization I'm with, the Internal Audit Center, we, we actually don't have summer or part-time work and we don't really offer co-op positions right now. A lot of that is the, the government's, uh, 
I guess, desire to kind of scale back the public sector uh, and, and kind of reduce reduce the, the number of uh, full-time equivalent employees that, that we have. Uh, it, it'll change uh, depending on who's in government and, you know, the, the state of the economy a bit. But we do, um, there, there is a government program called uh, Career Starts. It's, it's an internship, uh, I guess, program that it, it works closely with the Dow MPA program. And that's how a couple of our recent hires got, uh, I guess, got into the internal audit centers. They, they did an internship either with uh, the internal audit center or a, a different government department. And uh, then that transitioned into a, into a full-time job. Uh, but that, that's kind of the, the best spot to go. Uh, I, I think it's more of a after you're completed your, your uh, degree uh, rather than a co-op that, that you do during the degree. But uh, that's, that's, I guess, the, the best program we have now. Great. Thank you. And Lee? Very similar to Jen and Jeff. Um, okay. I am familiar that with uh, some co-op students and summer employment at Nova Scotia Power. Uh, most often these are posted on the websites or, or handled through a co-op office um, like that which would exist at the Mount. Um, and just to reiterate what Jeff said, I've se over the years that I've been there, I've seen a number of summer and co-op students get rehired either part-time or once they're completed their studies on a full-time basis because of the relationships that they've been able to um, develop while they're in the role that they're in. So, certainly. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. And the organizations, how, how competitive are are the positions for those looking to get into the field? You mentioned obviously having connections and just really, really being driven. How, just how competitive is it to get in? It's to very competitive. <laughs> 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 um, I know, for example, um, when we hire, we usually hire two CA students a year, um, and we have hundreds that apply. So that in itself is very competitive. Um, I know from being in HR, I get to see some cool stuff. So I can see some job postings that go out that have 30, 40 people apply, and it's one posting. And they don't come up that often. So from my experience, it's very, mm -hmm. it's very competitive. And the connections, like I think we've said five times now, <laughs> it's very important. And it can definitely get you a foot in the door from who you know, whether you know someone who's actually working there now. Um, or whether you know the people individually themselves right. that are hiring. Great. Yeah, I would I would reiterate what Jen said. I mean, I think it's it's quite competitive. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you you know you you need straight A's or it's it's trying to it's trying to find a way to differentiate yourself. If you've got a hundred people applying for one or two positions, um, naturally they're going to go through resumes and they're going to go through them relatively quickly to get through the hundred of them. So it's you, you, finding some way to to get yourself in front of them or, or differentiate yourself and a lot of times it's just how your resume looks too I mean there's there I, I can't tell you how many resumes I've seen that are you know there's spelling mistakes on them there's uh, just a the presentation there's way too much information on them there's nothing better than for somebody that's looking at a job to pick up a resume and be able to read it in you know 30 seconds and have have a, a good idea of, of what the person does so it's um, I guess the message is it's, it's to try and be as well-rounded as possible um, Definitely the firms um, and certainly where, where I am now, personality plays plays a big role in, uh, in the hiring process. They want to see people that are comfortable, you know, being in front of people, people that they can send out to put in front of clients that, you know, are, are comfortable talking to people and are, you know, socially able, able to do that. So I, I think, it, I think there's, there's almost as much importance placed on, on, you know, extracurricular or um, other things outside of your marks. Obviously the marks are, the marks are important when you have that many people applying for a job. They're, they're going to certainly pick people with strong marks, but I'd encourage you to, to do other things as well to, uh, to make your, your resume stronger outside of just, outside of just the schooling. Yeah, David? Uh, it, it's very similar to, to what uh, Jeff and Jennifer said. It's, quite competitive right now. We had uh, our most recent posting was for, uh, I guess, a level that would have audit experience already and uh, a designation or a master's degree. And I think there was one position and we had 70 or 80 applications for it. Uh, and as Jeff said, it's, you know, something that you have to differentiate on. Um, 
because there are so many applications, uh, you know, you're, you're getting five or six resumes that are selected, and from that, uh, you'll go through the interview process, and at that point, uh, kind of what's on paper doesn't really matter anymore. They, they kind of start fresh at the government at least, and uh, it, it's more how you're able to, to answer the questions, uh, you know, what your personality is like, what extracurriculars you have, uh, and whether you, you'll kind of be a good fit for the organization. Excellent. And Lee? The only thing I'd add to what everybody else has said is that um, just, um, just to kind of pile on to the competitive edge, it's really surprising the amount of um, entry level accounting or finance jobs that are coming that we receive resumes for um, from people who have full designations. Um, so when I first entered finance, I didn't have a designation and it seemed, you know, I, it didn't seem as difficult as it is now. When you are receiving 40 to 50 resumes, um, having a designation certainly puts you to the top of the pile okay. rather than the middle or the, the back of the pile. So that's something I've seen in the last few years that the market is, you know, full. So, so good marks, being well-rounded and having a designation. Okay. And what kind of opportunities do you have for advancement or growth or further training within your organizations? And if, David, if we could okay. start with you. Uh, within the internal audit center, we're, we're relatively small. We're probably between 15 and 20. Our, our numbers kind of fluctuate uh, a little bit. Uh, so, you know, there's, I guess, limited movement upwards depending on what level you're at. Uh, there's really only a couple positions above you. So unless somebody retires or decides to take a, a different position, you're, you might find yourself kind of stuck in, in one position, but certainly starting out, uh, you've got about four years maybe before you'd really find that with, within the internal audit center, but within the government as a whole, the provincial government, you know, there's, you know, dozens of departments and really you can move anywhere uh, laterally. Everything's posted on Career Beacon. Uh, that's the website that the, the province uses. So if you're interested in moving uh, or interested in getting on with the government, that's kind of the website to, to check out. And there's always, there's always opportunities. And I think even though the job market is full right now, maybe as, as we indicated, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of retirements coming up uh, in the next few years. So that should, you know, uh, allow you guys entry in and, uh, those people who are maybe in positions and in the job market now, uh, opportunities to advance. Great. Okay. Lee? So at Nova Scotia Power, I think there's many opportunities because um, the company, there's approximately 1,800 employees right now, at, uh, some in the corporate support areas, some in planning. There's a large number of employees in operations and uh, business development and strategic planning is certainly another arm of the business. Mm -hmm. Um, there's plenty of opportunity to progress through management or technical roles. Um, a large cohort of our organization is engineering, but uh, there is still lots of opportunity to progress through senior management roles. Excellent. Great. Thanks. Um, <coughs> our finance department is about 500 employees strong, so there are definitely lots of opportunities. Um, as they indicated, managers are definitely starting to retire, so that's a good thing that we can in Bell Alliant, we see the opportunity that there is room for us to move and grow. Um, there are currently a lot of young people in the finance department. They're trying to rejuvenate our workforce. So they're trying to bring in as many young people as possible. Um, so for me, I thought it might have been a smart move to go to HR because there aren't as many young people. Um, and there are pension aspects where I know HR isn't traditionally a role that an accountant would be in. Um, but I saw a path through pensions that could kind of get me to a director level faster than I could get there through finance. Um, so I guess there's lots of opportunities throughout the entire organization. It just depends on kind of where you want to be and trying to find mm -hmm. that path to move up. Great. Okay. Jeff. Um, I would say similarly there's, there's quite a bit of opportunity at the Business Development Bank uh, kind of in a, in a different way than, than it would be at, at uh, organizations such as Bell Alliant and Nova Scotia Power where there's a lot of employees here. We're spread out across uh, across the country. So, in Halifax, we have roughly I'm, I'm just guessing, but roughly 30 to 35 employees. 
Um, so there's there's some limits in terms of how far I might be able to advance, you know, this year or next year in in Halifax. But uh, the bank's great at at offering opportunities to do things like what they call stages. So if if you want to go and work in another department for a period of time, the bank will support you in doing that. Um, so you can get a feel as to whether that's an area that you that you'd like to move in to. Um, Career development, they're they're great at supporting that as well. So uh, funding funding courses, internal courses that they have at the bank to help to help develop you to to move on. So there's certainly opportunity to move up. It's not always necessarily uh, might not necessarily be in Halifax for somebody like me. Um, certainly in the short term, there it will be, but long term, you know. The nature of working in the banks is, uh, in order to move up, a lot of people have to have to move, even if it's just temporarily, to, to other cities for for a period of time to to take advantage of an opportunity that might exist there. Great. Okay. And what is it about your jobs that you love the most, that you enjoy enjoy the most? Maybe Lee, if we could start with you. Sure. I really enjoy the variety of the responsibilities that I have and the breadth of responsibilities. So my, my position right now touches very closely with operations and strategic planning while uh, having a, a significant amount of financial reporting uh, included within the role as well. Um, I enjoy the pace and coming in every day and not really knowing what the day is going to look like. So, mm -hmm. Great. Jennifer? Um, I like the flexibility that Bell Alliance provides. Um, Work-life balance was very important to me as well, so that's personally why I chose to go through industry to get my CA instead of going through a firm. There is a lot less overtime outside of a firm, so that works for me as well. Um, I like to volunteer abroad a lot as well, so Bell Alliance will give me time without pay and allow me to go for three to four weeks abroad to volunteer. Um, and they support that. So there's a lot of companies where you might not be able to step away for that long. So that's something that I value very much about my job as well. All right, and Jeff? Yeah, I would echo similar sentiment, sentiments to uh, what the lady said. I, uh, variety for me, um, this is sort of the first job I've been in where, I, where I'm really enjoying what I do. Um, it's a really nice balance between being out of the office, on the road for meetings, uh, lunches, things like that, and then also when an opportunity prevents itself or presents itself, being back, uh, being back in the office, doing some financial analysis, structuring deals, um, using some of some of my education and some of the background that uh, that I have, and and flexibility as well. I mean, you know, you're expected to work, but you also in in this role make your own schedule, book your own meetings, you're in and out. So that that to me. Uh, that to me is attractive, and I don't I don't like necessarily being behind a desk all day. So this this is a good fit for me that way. Great, and David. Yeah, my thoughts are, are similar. It's first word that comes to mind is variety. Uh, the the internal audit center has scope, I guess, across all the government departments. So one day you might be working in uh, Truro for agriculture on a farm, talking to veterinarians about a certain program. Other times you'll be uh, in Halifax talking about uh, maybe costing structures and, and uh, doing some financial analysis on, you know, nursing home beds and, and long-term care facilities. So there's, there's a ton of variety. Um, there's, there's lots to learn. You're always meeting a lot of new people. And our organization set up that, that most of our audit review engagements are done in a team. So there's always uh, a, a couple of people kind of tagging along if, you, if you're going out on field work, whether it's traveling across the province or staying within Halifax, it's, it's always good to have kind of a, a team atmosphere. Uh, keeps it a little more interesting and gets you out from behind the desk. Uh, those are cer certainly the best aspects and, you know, the, the government, I think, has a reputation of, of delivering a very good work-life balance. It's, you know, limited over time. It'll depend on your role and, and maybe uh, the, the project you're on, the time of year. But uh, it's, it's a great work-life balance and, and good benefits and, uh, you know, all, all those things make it a great spot to work. Great. So lots of variety. Do you have any advice or suggestions for students looking to enter the field? Uh, Jennifer, we start um, with you. Gosh, it's a lot of hard work, but it definitely pays off. Um, so stick with it. I know for myself there's challenges along the way that 
sometimes you feel like you're just not where you're supposed to be, but at the end of the day, when you can just get through it and get to the other side and have a designation, it's almost like job security. Um, you rarely will ever be unemployed. There's always people looking for people who have financial accounting skills um, in whatever capacity that may be, so stick with it. Um, it's definitely worth it. Great. Jeff? Yeah, I uh, similar advice. I, uh, I'm an example of somebody who, who did their CA and is in a role now that's not necessarily traditionally for a CA, so I think, it, I think doing a designation, having that accounting base uh, really opens up a lot of doors. Um, I think that you know, it's, it's something that, that a lot of people value, whether, you, whether you're working directly, directly in accounting or not. So I guess my advice would be if, if, you're, if you're still not sure what, what you want to do, um, it's not a bad place to apply yourself if you're willing to, to put in hard work for a couple of years and, and sort of see where it takes you because it does open it does open a lot of doors and you get to see a lot of a lot of different companies and a lot of uh, a lot of different opportunities just through through the work you do and make connections that way. So if you're if you're not sure what you want to do, it's it's not a bad place to apply yourself for a couple of years until you figure it out. Great, David. Yeah, it, it's similar. My designation. Uh, helped tremendously. I, I didn't get necessarily the job I was expecting to get or hoping to get out of uh, university. I ended up kind of maybe in a smaller firm in New Glasgow at the time. I wasn't thrilled about that, but it was a job and it enabled me to do my CA. I was there for three years and actually, you know, really enjoyed it there because I, I was able to maybe take more of a lead than I would have in, in a bigger firm, uh, di different atmosphere, uh, mm -hmm. different opportunities. Uh, so, so, you know, keep Keep positive. Keep applying for jobs. Uh, you know, just just you know, try not to get discouraged because because it is a, a very full job market. But getting uh, a designation for me was you know I, I guess the best job security and, and the best way to open doors for me. It allows uh, you know good options for for networking and uh, just just maintaining uh, I guess being up to date on on all the changes in the profession as they come. So. Th those would be the, the best things that, that work for me. Great. And Lee? The only thing I'd add to what everybody else said was um, your career is long, so try to be patient and learn and grow through new experiences. So even when you get a designation, you're not going to come in at a senior management or director level. Put yourself Sometimes you feel like you should. <laughs> yeah. There's you a won't. lot of people that feel like they should, <laughs> and maybe even after a year in a position, feel like they should be promoted six levels higher. So just be patient and learn, because uh, the more you can learn from others that have been with organizations for longer periods, the more you'll gain out of your position. So, Excellent. Great. And as far as students who want to look further into Nova Scotia Power, Bell Alliant, BDC, the Internal Audit Centre, would you just suggest going to the website and kind of investigating or is there a contact that you... Yeah, I, I would suggest, I mean, there's, I, I know for BDC, at bdc.ca, there's, there's tons of information on there. You can even actually, uh, they take resumes even when there's not jobs available, um, so that when jobs do come up, they have a bank of names that, that they can call on. And I, I certainly don't mind passing out my card. If, if any of you have any questions or want any advice, I'm happy to answer any emails or, or phone calls that you, that you might have, so. Great. Yeah, the, the website uh, for, for the province certainly has a, a ton of information. It's, uh, it's gov.ns.ca, and it's uh, the PSC, Public Service Commission, is kind of who handles the HR aspect for uh, all of the government. So that would include the Internal Audit Center. Uh, they use Career Beacon for, for all of their postings, and there's, there's a ton of information about uh, uh, you know, people who want to start a career with the province, people coming out of uh, university. Uh, the Career Starts internship program that I mentioned is on there as well. So uh, that, that's a ton of information that, that you can get. And my experience has been, you know, if, if you have questions about a profession just ask people they're they're happy to talk uh, and you know again if you have questions contact me contact someone you know who works for for the government or an organization that sh you see yourself wanting to uh, work for great uh, lee do you have anything to so no social power uses career beacon as well to post okay. their their positions um additionally the the uh, public website would also uh, provide those positions as well 
I do believe we're also on Twitter, and I think that I know who manages the Twitter account, and I think he would answer any questions and point <laughs> anybody in any direction that they need to be in. I think we field a lot of information through there. So. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, for us, it definitely all comes up on the Bell Alliance website. Um, I believe it also filters through Career Beacon. Um, for the CA program in particular, if that's what any of you are interested in, I know in September we do have an information session. Um, we give the dates to all the universities as well, so in September when that comes up, um, we definitely will let them out know. Um, and like they said, I have cards here as well. I'm very involved in our CA program, so if any of you want more information, please reach out. Um, I know I don't speak to a lot of other opportunities at Bell Alliance, but everything is posted um, on the website. I know that the CA program is just a formal process that we kind of go through to get our students in. Um, I don't believe there's quite a similar process for CMAs, but I know we do hire a lot of those as well. Um, but yeah, everything's Great. on the Bell Alliance okay. website. And Elsie, did you have a couple questions to? Um, actually, for David, uh, I know you are a chartered accountant and that has promoted you within the government. Yep. Uh, and in the internal audit uh, department, Okay. That okay. That's the. It's called the CIA designation. It's a chartered uh, internal auditor, uh, and that's administered through the IIA, the Institute of Internal Auditors. Uh, that's there's a, I guess a Canadian and a North American uh, governing body. They're trying to transition from North America to just a Canadian uh, IIA, but right now there's there's kind of both. Uh, that designation uh, is, you know, really f focused for people who want to do internal audit. It's maybe not as uh, seen as, as broadly across, uh, you know, all of accounting and finance. Uh, it's it's very highly regarded for internal auditors, and and a lot of the senior positions that you'll see uh, posted for internal auditors or audit managers or audit directors uh, will will kind of include that with the CMA, CGA, CA. Uh, classification, but kind of outside internal audit, it, it might not carry the same weight as, as some of the others just because it's focused a little uh, little closer. And that's one that you do, uh, I guess, by correspondence while you're working. Uh, there's, I think, four modules. I haven't done it, but I know people in the internal audit center who have done it. Um, and it's kind of self-study. Uh, you'll, you'll do, s I think there's four exams. And uh, as, as long as you satisfy all those and have the proper hour requirements and, and approved work, then uh, they'll issue you the designation. Great. And just to add to that, actually, uh, to the Jeff and Jennifer and Leah, I believe each of your organizations would have an internal audit department. Right. Uh, yep. Do you know anything about those, I guess, or maybe that's outside of the... I, 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 I don't know anything about it. It would be out of Montreal for... Okay be out of Montreal for us, so I don't, uh, I'm not familiar with it, unfortunately. Um, we do. One of the girls that I did my CA with at Bell Line actually took a permanent position in the internal audit department, and she is doing her CIA currently. Um, so yeah, our internal audit department is probably 10 people strong, so it's uh, One thing I do know about internal audit is there's probably no better, if you want to work at a company long term, there's probably no better way to learn ab about the company and, and learn all the, all the things that are going on at the company. It gives you a really, like auditing in general, I guess, it gives you a really strong base um, for, for how the organization works and how the different departments work. And, and okay. So I'm, I'm not as familiar with our internal audit department. Uh, I would reiterate what Jeff said, um, and I do know that there are most of the individuals in our internal audit department either have a CA or a CMA or a CGA. And I have one last question actually for Jeff. Jeff, uh, you're working mostly in sales, and I was wondering how your CA designation has helped you in your role. I guess it's it's helped me in a variety of ways. Uh, you certainly don't need to be a CA to to be in my position. In fact, uh, in in our office, uh, I'm I'm the only CA in in an account manager role. We have a couple other CAs in the office, but uh, it's helped me in a variety of ways. Uh, one, probably the biggest way uh, would would be the network. It helped me develop going through the CA. The CA world here in Halifax is relatively small. Um, you tend to get to know to know a lot of people in the profession. Um, a large 
part of our work or our loans that, that, that go out the door come through referrals from CAs. So leveraging that network has been, uh, has been a huge help in terms of, of getting business. Um, and then obviously the other, the other side of my work, uh, so part of it's sales, part of it's looking at the financial statements, understanding them, structuring loans, doing financial analysis, looking at cash flow projections. So it's a large part of my job that, that, it, that it directly relates to um, and allows me to provide maybe more, more specific or more detailed advice to, to some of my clients and what, what maybe some, some colleagues might be able to on the, on the accounting side anyways. And now questions from you folks for our lovely panelists. Not everybody There at must once. be one question. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody? Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us this morning. You shared a lot of very valuable information, and I would suggest that maybe. Do you have a question? Yeah, I guess. Just because <laughs> I was kind of thinking about this. Um, how is the, uh, I don't know if you guys would be the right ones to ask, but how has the, um, uh, the accounting designation change affected um, career paths? Like, I was looking at going in one specific path now, but as far as that's concerned, it's kind of up in the air now. Um, can you guys enlighten me at all? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not particularly <laughs> familiar with the, uh, with the changes, other than it, it's, it's going to, from a firm perspective, it's going to give them a wider pool of uh, of students and and people to choose from. So that's 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 one way it's going to change it. Um, I I I don't I don't have much. Um, from what I understand is through the CP designation and the way that they're going to structure it, um, everyone will kind of do the same program, but then you specialize. So you'll still be able to specialize. Like if you're working at a firm. Um, you would pick your, I guess they call them electives, as audit and tax. Um, if you're not at a firm, then I believe you have more of an opportunity to select different electives. Um, so with that, I believe you still specialize, but everyone will be a CPA, designated CPA, I yeah. guess. I um, think that, that, that's kind of my understanding as well. Uh, I. A lot of it is just kind of what we hear from the Institute. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how much has even been finalized yet. Yeah. Uh, but I, there's, there's a, a colleague of mine who's kind of looking into doing a designation. And I think in Nova Scotia, at least, the CMAs and CAs have committed to the merger of CPA. I don't think the CGAs have. Uh, and. That's kind of similar to other provinces. There might be two institute or two designations that are merging. Some provinces all are merging. I think, you know, a few years down the line, everyone will merge. It's just a kind of a matter of when. Uh, but yeah, I, I think overall, it'll it'll provide more mobility if if you have the CPA uh, designation, I guess, uh, because it it kind of encompasses everything. There will be, I think. Uh, I guess sub designations or streams or electives, whatever whatever they end up being called, uh, but you know that that would kind of be my advice is is to get in there now. I think I think this is the last year to do a CA, uh, CMA or CGA, and then the following year they're going to start doing the the merged uh, program. I'm not positive on that, but that's that's my understanding. Yeah, I, I guess my advice to you, if 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 you had a if you had a stream or an area that you whether it was CGA, CMA, or CA that you thought you wanted to do, I don't think much has changed. If that's if that's what you wanted to do, I would say stay the course. Um, the only caution I would I would give is that the CGA sort of being left out of this merger process. So where that leaves the CGA afterwards, I'm I'm not sure. Um, I would personally lean towards the CMA or the, or, or the CA myself. That's just a, a personal opinion, but and only because they're they're going to be creating the largest the largest body um, in in the country now. So that's that's where I direct my attention. But as far as CA versus CMA, if you thought you wanted to do a CMA, I'd I'd stay that course. Or if you thought you wanted to do a CA, I'd I'd stay that course. Yeah, go ahead. I, I guess I have a question. 
But if, say, if you graduate, you get a job offer for a job that doesn't necessarily require you to have a designation, and you take this job, would it negatively, negatively affect you going forward if, say, after a year, you didn't necessarily like this job and you want to then apply for a, a designated job with a firm? I would say absolutely not. I mean, any 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 work experience, you know, you go work somewhere for a year, you've got more experience than somebody coming out of school. So, no, I would say it would positively, if anything, positively impact you that you've, you know, th there's a lot of students that go into the CA program that then decide that it's not what they want to do and, and don't finish. So I think from personally, I mean, you can maybe speak to it, you're in HR, but from a hiring mm -hmm. perspective, if I had somebody that had gone out and work, worked for a year, realize that they want to do something you know else to me they would probably be even you know more likely to know what they want because they've been out in the workforce and they've got work experience yeah i would say that his response is probably bang on so it's not like you have to like go back and take other courses again no. to refresh your no, I mean, there's requi there's requirements for, for any of the programs. Like, if you look at the CA program, I, I'll speak to that just because that's what I know. There's requirements of what courses you have to have taken in university. But I know I know lots of people uh, who who have, my girlfriend included, who have gone through and are now doing the courses now. Um, she worked in a job where there wasn't where there wasn't a designation. She had a couple courses she had to do to get the requirements of the CA program, but she just did those while she, by correspondence, while she worked, so. And there isn't there is an entrance in exam for the CMA, so the longer you're out of school, um, you might want to consider doing. There's I, th I think it's still called an advanced managerial accounting program, so something to that effect. Um, it's basically just it, it refreshes you on all your accounting knowledge if you've been out of school for a certain period of time, and so it brings back all the key core elements that you need to know for the exam. Great. Any other questions? No? Okay. Well, thank you guys again for joining us. And if maybe you want to stick around just for a minute, if anyone wants to come up and say hi or grab a business card. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you.